What an absolute disappointment. Sony just followed in the footsteps of Apple by introducing its latest upgrade in the highly popular Sony ZV-E10 Mark I. This is the Mark II version, and to say this was the biggest camera flop in history is me being generous. Before I get into my opinions and predictions as to why I genuinely believe the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II is going to undoubtedly be the biggest camera flop in history, I will have to share with you that I'm no camera expert, videographer expert, this isn't my industry. I'm just sharing my genuine insights and opinions as a content creator, as a small YouTuber, and someone who runs a small coaching and personal training business. I have been utilizing this camera every single day, an average of two recording sessions per day for the last 365 days. I use it on socials as reels, long format videos on YouTube, thumbnails, marketing content, graphics, and the list goes on. So if you're not looking for a raw, genuine consumer-based discussion, then this video is not for you. If you're looking for someone who's a professional in the industry, who has actually got their hands on the camera, showing you the real world use cases, showing you how the camera operates, all the bits and bobs, then I recommend channels like Mark Bennett, Jason, Jared, and the list goes on. I'm the expert, I'm just a consumer. So let me give you my opinions and predictions. Prediction one, as you're aware, the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I is the best selling camera of all time, making up more than 50% of all of Sony's camera sales. Now, my prediction is that this camera that I'm using right now is gonna go from the best selling camera to the Mark II version being one of the worst selling cameras Sony has ever produced. That is my first prediction. Prediction two, because I genuinely believe my first prediction as to why the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II is gonna be one of the worst selling cameras of all time, and I'll get into why I believe that in a second, the Mark I version will continue being Sony's best selling camera for the next three to five years. It's got everything you require to start a YouTube channel, start a short format channel, start a small business, market yourself, create quality content, all the bells and whistles, and it's recently had a pretty decent price cut. Prediction three, in the next three to five years, upon Sony realizing how big they flopped on the Mark II, the biggest flopping of all time, they're gonna discontinue the Sony ZV-E10 lineup. There will never be a Mark III. Now let's talk about why I believe this to be the biggest disappointment, the biggest flop known to mankind. First and foremost, the astronomically ridiculous, the unfathomable price. Ladies and gentlemen, in Australia, the starting price for the last entire week was $1,849. I'm aware it's different from continent to continent. For example, in the US, the USA, it's $999. Where the hell did they get $1,849 from? The conversion rate only converts to $1,450. Where did the other $400 come from? Am I, am I missing something? Am I tripping out? What, what's happened here? Why are we getting charged an extra $400 on top of the conversion rates? The last one hour or two hours, literally just before recording this video, they had to lower the prices by an extra $200. I'm assuming because they didn't get any bloody pre-orders because of the ridiculous prices, but now on the official website in Australia, it's $1,699 from $1,849. Not big of a difference. And to be honest, it's still a scamaz, and no one should bloody be buying the camera for that price. You can bloody buy the Sony A6700 for the same price, literally. $1,890, brand new. I can go tomorrow, brand new in store, and buy the A6700 in Australia for $1,000. $888. So how does that make sense? For the Mark II to be $1,849 for just the body alone, what are they smoking? The conversion rates don't add up, the pricing doesn't add up. For all the specifications for everything the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II offers, there's no justification for the pricing to be more than $1,199 for the body alone. There is justification for um, the body and the new kit lens to be $1,399, but nothing more than that. They just changed it, I promise you, one hour to two hours ago, they changed it to $150 less. 
My next point as well is the fact that it's priced the same as a camera that's the top of the line, the creme de la creme of all APS-C cameras, a camera that in my opinion, a beginner can take hold of and become an absolute expert in videography and photography. A hybrid camera that you can utilize for the next five to 10 bloody years. The Mark II, I don't know how they flopped this bad. It just doesn't make sense to me. You had such a desirable starting point. You had opinions of millions of customers and you flopped. It's only a 10% benefit over the Mark I version that I'm using now. The only benefit that I see as a consumer is the 10 bit 422. Nothing else appeals to me. What does it have over the Mark I version? What, vertical icons? How's that gonna benefit me? I'm a solo creator. This doesn't benefit me. The product showcase, I already have. The rocker, I already have. 8-bit for 99 out of 100 content creators is enough. Yes, I've personally outgrown 8-bit, as in that I do a lot of post-production in color grading, but 99 out of 100 creators aren't gonna care about 10422. That is, they're not gonna put it to good use. Those, those bars, those lines, those cine, cine tones, those cine vlogs settings, that's garbage. I'm gonna be straight up, that's absolute garbage. The only benefit from the Mark II version over the Mark I, yes, it has more phase detection, probably better tracking, higher megapixels, better color grading. Where's the IBIS? Why the hell did you remove the mechanical shutter? Now, the Mark I, in my opinion, is better than the Mark II because now the Mark I is a hybrid camera. The Mark II isn't a hybrid camera for me no longer, if I was to purchase it. I, as I mentioned, I use the Mark I for thumbnails, graphics, website, content, everything. So I need a hybrid camera. You've taken out the hybrid aspect by introducing, or removing rather, the mechanical shutter, just as an example. Having bigger camera uh, battery capacity, I don't bloody care. I've got three spare batteries two of which are from just third-party batteries that operate the exact same. You can just interchange batteries within one second, I'm back to shooting. Overheating has never been an issue, so all the additions and all the changes that they've done for the Mark II version just aren't applicable to someone who has been using the Mark I for more than six months. You needed a significant jump, something like the A6700. Now, albeit, if the Mark II was priced AUD, $1,199, I would have actually invested in it. But the fact that they introduced the pre-orders at 1,849 and now they're selling it still for 1,699, what? I'm just gonna go tomorrow and buy the A6700 if I really wanted to. And I'm talking about brand new prices here. Let's not even begin to discuss the second hand market. I guarantee in the USA, brand new price of $999, you can probably find a second hand, barely used A6700, I would say for 1,050, 1,100. And it's probably got the additions on top of that, like the cage, probably an SD card. And it like, oh my God, I'm so over it. Like, I don't know how you flopped this bad. I was looking for, the reason I'm so emotional about this bloody thing is I was looking forward to this camera for the last six to eight months. Cause because I went into hyper creator mode and was pumping out content like never before, I immediately out, outgrew this camera in a sense where I stopped learning. There wasn't much else to learn with the camera I'm currently using. As you can tell, I'm beyond disappointed because something I was looking forward to ended up being an absolute waste of my brain capacity, an absolute waste of brain cells. The A6700 should always be the camera that you look to upgrade to from the Sony ZV-E Mark I. The Sony ZV-E 10 Mark II, I don't know where the hell that fits in the lineup, no one should ever consider buying this camera, especially in Australia. If you're Aussie, please watch this video. Please share this video to a fellow Aussie because it's the exact same price, not even factoring in the secondary market. It's got AI detection, AI sensor, AI cropping, 13% versus 33%, I think it's 12% actually, active stabilization crop, 4K 60, no crop, 4K 120, 1.5 crop, EVF, same screen, same battery, same megapixel, same sensor, fair enough, but it's got IBIS, five stops of IBIS, bloody fair dinkum. What more could you want? Over $700 in addition of value in comparison to the Kaka Mark II. I'll rest my case. The Sony ZV E10 Mark II is the biggest camera flop of all time. Thank you very much for nothing. That's gonna wrap up today's video. If you learned something, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel, comment below, and if you wanna debate me down in the comment section, feel free to. I promise I'll be civilized, I won't be as heated as I am now. <laughs> Anyways, 
See you beautiful people in the next video.